Today we're going to talk about some basic Windows processes. And whether you are a new user of a Windows computer or a fairly experienced user, I hope that you will find some things here that will help you. There is no need to take notes. Uh, you can have a copy of this presentation. It will run on your Windows XP computer. You can either bring me a CD and I'll burn a copy on that or bring me a memory stick. Most of these ideas are contained in more detail on some other presentations that are available to you and if you want to get a copy of those you can come and see me. So one of the questions that new users have often is where do I start? This is rather overwhelming. Well the sensible place to start is the place marked start. To find that you take your mouse if you're a mouse user you go down to the lower left corner of the window and you press start or you press the Windows key on your computer and when you do one of those two you see the start menu. Now you might say to yourself what is the Windows key? Well it's the key on your computer which is somewhere down near the space bar or in some, on some keyboards in the upper right hand corner and it looks like this. So you get that menu up and what do you do next? Well I suggest that you go to the help and support portion of that start menu and you click there. When you do you will open the help and support center. Uh, it looks like this and on my computer it there's a lot about Compaq and you can learn more about your particular computer but even if yours has no particular uh, information about your particular computer, I think there's a place on here that everyone who uses Windows should go to at one time or another because there's all sorts of information there. It's called Windows Basics. And when you click that, when you get there, you will find core Windows tasks. Now, you will see. Uh, on many places in your computer a place to the left of a menu with a plus sign. When you click that plus it opens up all sorts of other subparagraphs under core Windows tasks. There, this, the, this set of menus is a place where you can learn a lot of interesting things. There are all sorts of things here that I think you should look at, but let me just show you one. Let's look at the one that says working with files and folders. If I click that name, a whole bunch of tasks show up which you can select to learn things about that particular task. So let's look at opening a file or folder. If I click that, it gives me specific directions as to how to open a file or a folder. It says open my documents. Well I'm sure that most of you know how to find my documents but for those who don't anytime you see a symbol like this which is a shortcut symbol and a set of words or a phrase which is underlined and in blue that is a clickable set of words. So if I click on my documents it will in fact open my documents. It has opened in a new window. Now if that was what I wanted to continue to learn how to do I could continue with the detailed instructions here about how to open a file or a folder and I could follow the detailed instructions and you will not notice that it is quite detailed. New users get confused on things like double click versus single click. Well this tells you here exactly what you need to do at each place and it has notes to help you 
with what you are doing. Now if I want to go back to some of the other tasks that are listed under working with files or folders, you will see that there are all sorts of things you can learn uh, about lots of functions that you need to do regularly on your computer and perhaps some things that you don't do regularly but every now and then you say to yourself, I wonder if I could uh, show file and folder tasks in Windows Explorer or save a file with a different name or format. Well, you can click each one of these and learn just what you can do. And I would like to point out that there are also some tutorials down at the bottom. You can click on one of these and when you do, after a couple more clicks, you will get the opportunity to double click on a tutorial which is a video uh, titled Opening and Saving a File. Opening and saving a file. In this exercise, you'll learn to locate and open files from the My Documents window. You'll also learn to save a file. Finally, you'll learn to change a folder view to display the folders list. Opening files so that you can view, edit, or print them is one of the most common tasks you'll perform in Windows. To open a file named Letter that's stored in the My Documents folder, click the Start button and click My Documents. And the tutorial will not proceed until you do what it says. You have to click the Start button and then you have to find My Documents. See it says click My Documents next as soon as I click the Start button. I have to find that and click here before the tutorial will proceed. By default, the My Documents folder contains the My Music and My Pictures folders. And I am not going to uh, walk you through the rest of that. So here we are again at the Help and Support Center where we have looked at several subjects in Windows Basics. And we got there by going to the Start menu and clicking Help and Support. I really recommend that any Windows user take some time to go there, look at Windows Basics, and look at several of the core Windows tasks. I found some interesting things in working with programs and managing Windows. But now, let's go on to other places that a new user or an adventurous intermediate user might want to go in his or her computer. All of us who bought a computer probably bought it because we wanted to do some specific things on that computer. Maybe we wanted to type a letter and print it out so we could mail it. Maybe we wanted to find out uh, what's playing at the movies this weekend or what's playing at the Civic. Maybe we wanted to surf the internet for other purposes. Maybe we wanted to get our finances in order. And maybe we wanted to send and receive email. Well, for all of those things, you need specific programs that are either resident on your computer or which you can buy and make resident on your computer. So how do you get at those programs? Well once again you go to the start key or the start location on your computer and then you go up to programs and when you get there all the programs on your computer are displayed. In my case there are a lot of them. There are some on here that I've never used. There are others that every time I do one of these seminars I get curious and click on one of them and I learn something new. So now I'll show you several programs that are on my computer you'll see that some of them which have no little triangle or arrow over at the right will open directly if I click on this particular line anywhere in that blue line 
But others, like the first one we're going to open, are in fact a suite of programs. This suite is Microsoft Office and it includes Microsoft Word, Microsoft Office PowerPoint for presentations, Microsoft Office Excel, which is a spreadsheet, and any one of these that you click on will open that particular program. So we are going to click on and open Microsoft Office Word. And of course this is the program that you would use if you wanted to type a letter, print it out, and mail it. And you have of course been looking at a document in Microsoft Word which is where I constructed the document which is the outline for this presentation. Now the next program we're going to talk about is one of those that has no uh, no separate suite of programs beyond it. That's Internet Explorer. You look for the blue E for Internet Explorer. And when it opens, it allows you to go online and go to a number of places where you may find things of interest. My home page is The Motley Fool because that is a place where I learned a great deal about investing in stocks. With Internet Explorer you can go to some very interesting places like Google where you can put in almost anything like uh, vacation rental San Diego. You do a Google search with the term vacation rental San Diego and you will find all sorts of places like the Bahia Resort Hotel, like uh, California Suites Hotel, San Diego Sunset Vacation Rentals and sites like uh, 411.com and vacationrentals.com which lists hundreds of vacation rentals if you were interested in taking a vacation in San Diego. And when you get to one of these that looks interesting you can click on the underlined words at the top and you will come up with a list of vacation rentals by owner in this particular case. And you can look at individual vacation rentals, perhaps a condo at uh, $1,100 to $1,900 a week, or perhaps a 4,000 square foot luxury home with a new pool at $450 a night. Your choice. There are millions of places you can go on the internet to find interesting things. And when you find an interesting thing, you can put it in your favorites. I have places saved on my computer that I go back to. I was there a couple of times today looking up bank balances, trying to solve a problem. Uh, you can look at old bank statements if you were set up with your bank to do that. Uh, I have uh, things relating to my family. Here was a grandchild where a video of his graduation was put up on YouTube. And I can play that whenever I feel like it. I have uh, information on general information about Hawaii places that I've found useful stuff. Uh, just all sorts of things. Quite a bit on investment on my computer. Here is a program that I find very useful for keeping my financial house in order. It's Quicken. And here you can run a uh, check register with no
question of having bad math cause you to have a uh, an over a uh, a lower bank balance than you expected. You can also keep track of your investments there. You can find out uh, what your gain or loss has been from a certain time until now. You can also have it set up so that it tells you when each recurring payment, like your mortgage or your water bill or your uh, dumpster bill, uh, is due every every month and it will tell you when that happens and then you can make that entry in your in your uh, check register and either print out the check or if you have online banking simply with one click tell your bank to issue the check to the payee and then of course there is your email program most people uh, buy a computer to start off to send and receive email and there are many programs available to do that one comes with uh, Windows Outlook Express I choose America Online which uh, brings me my daily dose of uh, jokes uh, political statements etc and allows me to answer back. So that is a sampling of the programs on my computer or yours. One more thing before we get into some details on some common operations. The uh, one of the early questions of new users is how do I turn this darn thing off? Well to stop you gotta start. You click start and you click turn off this computer and then a window comes up which allows you to put it in standby, turn it off, or turn it off and then immediately turn it back on again, which is sometimes necessary with Windows when it gets cranky. So now I'm going to talk some more about some of those common operations. And to be instructive about this, I'm going to use the drop-down menus at the top of most all Windows programs. These are these things up here. I suggest that you go home and really use the drop-down menus on the programs you are using or you are thinking about using. There is a lot of information there. Uh, the first one is usually File, the next one is usually Edit, and the last one is usually help. And I'm going to start with the last, help. Now, drop down menus are different program to program. And the program that I'm going to use to start with the help menu is on Quicken because that is the most generic. When you go to any one of these words up here at the top and click on it, a drop-down menu opens and you have things that you can select from there. So let's start at the Help drop-down menu. And the first item, which is where we're going to start, is Quicken Help. When we click that, a new window opens, which I can grab at the top and pull up here, and it opens with contents. And each one of the these items has a wealth of information about Quicken, how Quicken works, how you use it, how you do specific things. If I click the little plus sign, I get more details like well getting started. Over on the right, tell me about setting up Quicken. There's quite a bit to read and there are places to go when you don't understand what you're reading. Quicken matches your profile with categories what, that you may want to use. You see it's underlined, you can click categories and tell me about categorizing transactions. It explains what categories are and then you can go back to getting started 
and read the whole thing. That's one way that information is presented in a help drop-down menu, a table of contents where there is lots to read. The other way is in an index, something that is alphabetized, that you can search. To illustrate that, I am going to use the drop-down menu in Internet Explorer. Because when you look at that drop-down menu, the first choice is Contents and Index. So you have a choice of the contents, organized as you would find things in the front of a book you were exploring, and also you find an index, organized alphabetically, as you would the index in the back of a book. So if you wanted to look up a particular thing of which you knew the name, like cookies in a browser, you type that in, you pick a topic under cookies, and you display it, and it gives you a whole bunch of stuff to read on that particular subject. You also can go to search and you can type in a keyword to find that. Uh, let's try cookies again. We'll list the topics. Aha! Deleting a cookie, understanding cookies, which we saw before, uh, understanding privacy reports, different ways to get at the same information. So I recommend that you go home and spend some time reading things that you find on your help menu. Most of the things that I teach here at the Seniors Computer Group I learned by reading the help menu. Now let's go back to the first couple of things on those drop-down menus and we'll start with file. And for that I'm going to stick to uh, Microsoft Word, but I'm going to open a new document. So if I click File and then click New, I have a choice of different kinds of new documents that I could put up. I'm going to just put up a blank document, and there it is. Now, I could type a letter, I could uh, make a uh, brilliant outline of the, my next course. I could do all sorts of things on this document. But now suppose that what we want to do is to open a document that is already in the computer, one that has been saved before. Well, in that case, instead of going to File New, we go to File Open. And it puts up the Open window. And there's a lot of stuff on this Open window which you need to look at and think about before you go madly clicking here, there, and thither. And you need to look at what it says. It says, look in my documents. Right now, if I pick something from here, it will. it is something that is in the folder My Documents. That's where computers usually start out guiding you when you go to look for something. But if you don't like My, if you don't want to look in My Documents, you can go down one level to Documents Often Used. Now you are looking in my Documents, Documents Often Used. See, Documents Often Used is up here at the top. And now you're looking at the folders that are in Documents Often Used. If you don't like that, you can go up one level here. There's a little drop-down window that says Up One Level when I hover my mouse over this symbol, which has an up arrow. Or if, if and if I go back up, well, no, let's, let's leave it at that. Let's go up to My Documents. We double-click that. 
And then we're going to go down to Documents Often Used and double click that. Now in Documents Often Used, I have a folder called Teaching Packages. It's down here alphabetically under T. If I double click that, it puts Teaching Packages up at the top. Now if I look at the window hierarchy of what I'm looking at, I'm looking at my documents. In my documents, I'm looking at the folder Documents Often Used. And in the folder Documents Often Used, I'm looking at the folder Teaching Packages. And now I can see all the, there are some other folders in, in that Teaching Packages folder. But there are also, and oh, and one of those other folders is Beginners 02N for November. That is something that I put together way back when, and in it is a folder, is a document, a Microsoft Word document. This tells you the type of document it is. This tells you how big that document is. And this tells you when it was last saved or modified. Now, if I double click on that, the document Beginners and Other Endangered Species, or Beginners and Other Endangered is actually the name of the document, is open. So that's two of the uses of items in the file drop down menu, new and open. Now, I'm going to go back to that last wonderful document that I composed, which was labeled actually document four, with all these wonderful thoughts. And let's say I want to save that. Well, where am I going to save it in my computer? This is one of the most misunderstood things by new computer users in the whole computer world. You have to decide where to save something. Now, you may decide where to save that and accidentally put it somewhere that you don't want it. You need to think through where you want to save it. Here, I'm going to click File. And there are, when I get the whole file menu, which is what you get when you uh, click that thing at the bottom. See, that, see this little double arrow down here? That opens up the whole file menu. There are two kinds of saves. There's Save and Save As. When you first save something, you should select Save As. And when you do that, it gives you the same kind of window as you had in the open window, and only it says Save In. Now, if I save this right now with this name, which is the first thing that's in the document, that word automatically takes the first word or two or three words in the document, probably the first line, and picks that as the name of the document. But if I just click Save right now, it's going to be saved in that hierarchy that where I found the other document. It's going to be saved in My Documents, Documents Often Used, Teaching Packages, Beginners O2N. This is not, I don't want to save this in something which is a folder representing what I was doing in November of 2002. I want to save that either in a different folder in Teaching Packages. Uh, let's see, is there one in here that's a, appropriate? Stock presentation at Rancho Bernardo Library? No, I don't think so. Well, maybe I need to make a new folder. Maybe I need to make a folder in Teaching Packages that's entitled um, uh, August Presentation 2009. To do that, I have to put a new folder in under the folder Teaching Packages. And to do that, I come down here and I click on this icon, which has a little label that right down here. I hope you can see it in this presentation called Create New Folder. You will see it on your own computer if it's not going to be reproduced in this recording. So when I create new folder, it, get, it asks me what I want to call it. And I'm going to call it um, August. August. Well, it'd be a good idea if I could type. August 2009 presentation at SCG. 
OK. I'm going to click OK. And now, when I pick a name for this, this is going to be Sample Document. Sample Word Document. And I save it. Now, it is saved there. Now, if I went back to, if I closed it up here, which you can do, you can close the actual document by the X under the under the X at the top. So now I can click that and we have left just the 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 old thing that was in from November of 02. Now if I go to file and I click open it will start me off at the new place. Documents often used, teaching packages, August 2009 presentation at SCG and I can click on that and click open while that is selected and once again we get this marvelous document that I just uh, composed for my next presentation. Now let's talk a little bit about the edit drop-down menu. When you click the edit drop-down menu and you see the whole thing you'll see that cut, copy, and paste are three of the things that are used most often in the edit menu. They are used to copy things from one place to another on a document or to move things from one place to another on a document. When you cut something from one place and then paste it to another if you were doing this with scissors on this document, you'd be moving it. So that's why it's called cut and paste. And the way you do it is like this. Supposing I want to copy this line down here. Well, I highlight that line by pushing down my left button on my mouse and dragging it all the way across and then letting go. And I click Edit copy. Then I take my cursor and I put it, I have to use the enter key to drop it down here and then it, when the edit key is down here I click edit and then paste and when I do that line is copied down here. Now supposing that that was a mistake, well I can edit it and undo the paste. It remembers the last thing you did and allows you to undo it. Ah, I undid it and it's gone. Supposing I decided that instead of copying it down there, I wanted to move it down there. Then I would highlight it the same way, click Edit, click Cut, and then put the cursor where I want it to be pasted and click Paste. And now it has been moved. Now let's talk about copy, cut, and paste as it applies to files and folders instead of words or phrases. Supposing we want to move a whole document or copy a whole document that is somewhere in our computer and we've decided it should be somewhere else either in addition to where it is now or instead of where it is now. Well, to do that, we have to get into My Documents, as we did before. You could go back to that Help and Support menu and come up with the place where I showed you where you can cl click My Documents, or you could, on my computer, come down to the Quick Start menu, which is here at the, the lower left, and click on this little icon which is a picture of a folder with a magnifying glass in front of it. That is Windows Explorer or My Documents. Now you remember we saved that wonderful outline of my next presentation in Documents Often Used and under that it was in Teaching Packages and under that we saved it in August 2009 presentation at Senior Computer Group. And when we get down to that folder, 
we actually find a Microsoft Word document of 24 kilobytes saved August 5th, 2009 at 3.33 p.m., which is just about 20 minutes ago, named Sample Word Document. Now, supposing that I decide that I want to have that a whole copy of that document somewhere else in my computer, and I do. The reason I do is because this whole presentation is being recorded on a program called Camtasia. And I keep all the things pertaining to a particular presentation that is recorded in Camtasia in a Camtasia folder, which has in it folders for each Camtasia presentation. I'll show you where that is in a minute. But what I'm going to do right now is select that document. You see it's totally highlighted like the words were or the phrases were on the individual document that we wanted to copy. But now I'm highlighting the whole document. And I'm going to click Edit, Copy. Now I'm going to go find that Camtasia folder. I happen to know where it is because my uh, computer is pretty well organized. There's the Camtasia Studio folder with a plus sign on it. It has lots of folders in it. The one that I am using for this particular presentation is called Basics. And there are all the little piece recordings of what you have been listening to <laughs> for these 30 minutes. And I am now going to, and also there's a, there is that um, Word document, an introduction, which is what you were looking at as an outline of this presentation. Well, I'm now going to paste that entire document that is in um, uh, down in teaching packages. I'm now going to paste that here in this basics folder. And I'm going to do that by clicking by right clicking on this on this highlighted folder. I can either right click on it and then click paste or I can select it, go up here to edit, and then click paste. Or I can go and type control and then type the V key. That tells you what you can do that also makes it paste. But I'm going to just click paste. And there you see sample Word document created today, which is the 5th of August at 3.33 p.m. and there is now a copy of that up here in this Camtasia Studio folder for this presentation. And it is still down in Teaching Packages August 2009. See it's still there. That's a brief overview of three of the most you two of the most used and a third which should be most used in my opinion of the drop down menus in almost any program in Windows. I hope this has been helpful to you and I'll be happy to take questions.